If you're on a turntable, you've probably seen one of these switches. Its purpose is to speed up or slow down your record to suit the record's RPM speed. And if you're like me, you've probably wondered why. Why does this very old Decker run at a much faster speed than this 45? And why do both of these run at a different speed than the world famous 33 and a third? And where do these speeds even come from? Well, let's find out. Let's tackle the first part first. Why are the different speeds? It's hard to explain this, so I'm going to give you the in a nutshell version, which is the faster the record, the better quality of music you're going to get. For example, one second of music on this Sgt. Pepper's album would take about, which yeah, which runs at 33 RPM, would take about half the record on one groove to complete that second, while this record run at 78 RPM would take several loops to complete. That extra space will allow for more signal to be put into that same second, increasing the quality. Hopefully all that made sense, but that is why records like this really old Decca run at such a fast pace, 78 RPM. However, you might still be wondering, why 78? Why not 86 or 54? And for that, we will have to dig into its history. You see, the very first ever set standard was 78, which is the speed these old decagrams and other 10-inch records from the period ran at. But before 78 RPM was made, all, you know, phonographs and turntables were hand-cranked, making a set speed impossible. And it was like this until, like, around the uh, late 1800s, when people started to manufacture electric, motored, powered, um, de um uh, phonographs. And, um, of course, that allowed a set speed, and they chose 78, which was the peak efficiency level. And he fastened 78, and the stylus would just run through it too quick, and any slower, it would just be too low of quality. So that ended up being the speed they chose, and it became the standard for a while. That is until recording methods began to improve, allowing the quality of a record or the music to go up and the speed to go down. This was a massive advantage to manufacturers and consumers, because now records can be 5 or 6 minutes long instead of 2 minutes. And because of this, a 12 inch record began to become very popular. Records like these. This is a 33 and a third RPM record, and today one of the more popular records. These records were extremely popular in the 40s and 50s, and remained popular for quite some time, being the flagship record, if you will, today. Sadly though, 78 RPM records faded out of fashion after World War II. This leaves us with our final record, 45 RPM. And 45 is a bit hard to explain. Back in the 60s, 50s, and 40s around there, um, RTA and Columbia, two big record-making companies, were kind of at a rivalry with Columbia's 33 and a third RPM doing great and RCA's not doing so great. So now RCA decided to put out a smaller 45 um, RPM. This new 7 inch record, which ran at 45 RPM, hence the name 45 RPM Records, was smaller, more compact, and because of the higher speed, higher in quality. This new record, because of those features, soon grew in popularity, and soon manufacturers for record players and turntables began to include settings for both 45s and 33s. This record is called a single because it has one song on each side. A singular song, hence the name once again. And this song is usually the main song of an album that came out. For instance, um, um, Sgt. Pepper's would have 
the main song of that album, um, B45. I'm not sure what the main song is, leave in the comment section if you know. But that is 45s in a nutshell. And so there you have it, the history behind 45s, 78, and 33 and a third RPM records. Thank you for watching, and before you go, for those who have subscribed to my channel or are a regular viewer, I've had this crazy idea about changing the name to The Vintage Duck. It suits the channel a lot better. Anyway, I'd love to hear your opinion, leave it in the comment section. But until next time, keep it all good, and I'll see you then.